Oh, I can't leave the chat up because anyone wants to see the slides. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, today is Ignite Session 10, and we're going to talk about keeping every lead. I think I just turned off my camera again. I'll get it to work. Got it. See, I mean, I'm not good at that. All right, so we're going to talk about lead follow up, and this is the third segment of Ignite because Ignite is a whole new uh, program that they have changed everything. So today we're going to talk about following up with your leads. Um, you've covered becoming a real estate expert of choice, building your value proposition. You've covered generating leads through the and marketing. So today we're going to focus on lead generate follow up. Um, generating leads can take almost no time at all, but the important part of it is to follow up with them. If you do not follow up with them, what's the point in lead generating at all? All right, I mean, we can go move on to step next. Um, all right, so the agenda today, by the end of today, you're gonna be able to describe the benefits of establishing a system. And we follow up, apply the 19 to connect touch campaign with leads and explain the importance of cementing the relationship with the leads. So I want you to start thinking today um, and consider what questions you might have while you're going through. And we'll have spots where you can ask. Um, all right, same slide, good. Do you guys all have your participation guide in your books or are we just taking notes? Just taking notes. All right, good. All right. So let's let's go back to the beginning. How do you clarify a lead? What what is the definition of a lead? And anybody on Zoom can unmute and throw it out there. We can hear you in Middletown. Don't all talk at once, and you know I will um, call on you. Although, Eileen, can you make it so I can see everybody somehow? You have to do that on your end. Oh, you want to see everybody? Yeah, okay. I, I highlighted you so people at home could see you, but I think if you go on the grid, you can right. show all the faces. Appreciate you, because then I can annoy them and call on them, too. Yeah, you know what? Nobody else besides me has their camera on anyway. So <laughs> yeah. it doesn't mean I can't call on them. That does not mean you can't call on them. But although I will tell you, two people are at work. So that would be Wendy and Lucas. Yeah, Wendy's always at work. We know. <laughs> All right. So somebody define a lead. What is a lead? Eugenia, what's a lead? Oh my God. No. What is a lead? Um, any contact you make. Okay. The contact you make that becomes a client, a potential client, that will become a lead eventually. No. Someone you had a conversation God, Daniel, with. Wait. Yeah. Kathy. Someone you had a conversation with that's interested in your services. Correct. Somebody that you have talked to that may be interested in a service that you provide. Okay. When you have their contract tax information, they become a contact so that you can have a two-way conversation. Those of you that were involved should know that. All right, so let, let, let's look at this, this graph. What does this graph tell you? Someone the people move every seven to 10 years. Right, okay, so <laughs> thanks. Thanks, genius, genius. At the top of the wave, people are, no, go back, there you go. Stay there, Eileen, we're good. So at the top of the wave, people are moving. Every seven to 10 years, people move. So where are they most likely to be a viable lead? When they're going up. At the top of the, the market, right? So if you are at, if I give you a lead and they are right here, what is that? It's a hot lead. If I gave you a lead and they just, bought a house, what is that? It's a cold lead, but what are you gonna do with it? Nurture, follow up. Why? Because eventually they're gonna end up buying or selling. Right, and what is the point of follow up? Nurture. 
keep your face in front of their face. Mm -hmm. Top of my DC fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank God Danielle's here. I don't have a nutrition practice. <laughs> All right, so let me ask you this. Would you consider a, a lead I gave you at the bottom of one of the waves a bad lead? No. no. Okay, you are so lucky you all answered that. <laughs> <laughs> there is no bad lead, right? Every lead on the wave is, is on a wave somewhere. Doesn't matter when you talk to them, they are somewhere in this position at all times. The ideal of an illustration, as a real estate agent, following up with all of these leads frequently and, in, and with frequency intensity is the key to remi remaining in close emotional proximity so that as the lead approaches the next top of the wave, you are the first person they think of. Okay, Eileen, you could change me. <clears throat> think of the leads that you enter into your database through lead generation, as your possible business. Lead follow-up helps turn the leads from possible business into probable business. The end goal being a profitable business, right? So anybody that you are bringing into your database in lead generation, so I know you guys did social media one. So all of the leads that pull in to, from your social media, your Facebook ads, all of that stuff, those are leads and possible business, right? What is the average amount of people that you get a hold of? I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody too. Yeah, you know. What is the probability of talking to these Facebook leads? Never 5%. Huh? 5%. Approximately 5%, you will get a hold of closely, quickly, I should say, not closely. So in 2021, the National Association of Realtors profiled home buyers and seller details and opportunity with your lead follow up. 73% of buyers only talked to one agent before they chose to work with them. And 82% of sellers only talked to one agent before they decided to work with them. So what does that tell you? You got to talk loud so they can hear you too. You got to get in there first. You got to get in there first, right? So what are you guys going to do to ensure that you are the one agent that everyone in your database remembers? Set up some smart yeah. plans. Yeah. I can't hear you, Jacqueline. Set up some smart plans. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just one. <laughs> Anybody on Zoom got anything? Hello? Okay. Maybe repeat your question. <laughs> There we go. Make sure you're top of mind. Yep. Okay. So the concept is to take up space in people's minds. Stay in close emotional proximity. Give me some ways that you could be at the top of someone's mind. Care calls. Care calls. What do we use in Keller Williams for a care call? E T. No. The Ford. All that. Christina, what? Ford. What is Ford? Don't ask me. Family, family occupation, occupation recreation, recreation James. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thinking back to the day that you learned about lead generation and what touches are the strongest when it comes to building handwritten correspondence, Wendy said, strongest when it comes to relationship building, what do you think, what about the weakest? What do you think the strongest way to communicate with somebody is? A call, a call right? The weakest are emails and text. Why do you think email and text is the weakest? Because they can read them and not respond. They don't even look at their emails. Talk to in person or call. Say again. People don't even look at their, a lot of their emails. How many of you get emails from Keller Williams every single day? 
How many of you read every single email that comes I through that email? One of them. Shut up, Daniel. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Nosy. Well, okay? yeah. All right. So some of us do. <laughs> yeah. If you want to stay there, doing weekly or go back up to. I'm working on it. Gotcha. Zakia says weekly or monthly follow ups and speaking on matters you talk with them before. That is a great one, Zakia. How would you do that? How would you remember? So I have a 1,945 people in my database. How would I remember what I said to them last month? I can't hear you. Keep so notes just, on them, like keep notes in your database. Keep notes in your, in your database. Where do we do that? In your like comments section, I believe it is. It's in like command, a, right? In command, yes, that's what I meant. Right. That just solidifies even more that we need to use command at a high level, yes? Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. All right, if you aren't first or second in their mind, you probably will not get the business. This is a quote right out of the millionaire real estate agent book. Mindshare is gained through positioning yourself in front of your leads frequently with relevant and timely information. The goal is to open the door to two-way communication in addition to getting them to think about you and you anytime they think about real estate. Through Ignite, you've been introduced to different systems that engage your leads and contacts to help them you gain mind share. What are some of these systems? What are some of the things you've learned throughout Ignite so far? Pause to action to get them to respond. What are some of the things that you've learned? Six personal perspectives. What about the six personal perspectives? Um, so first it is, um, you know, just kind of assessing in, in yourself and um, coming up with a plan for turning from entrepreneurial to purposeful. Okay, so, being, so now we're in P. What does that P look like? It's a system, right? So while you're going in your six personal perspectives and going from E to P, you are creating systems that work for you to make you be purposeful. So some of the systems that you should be using is 19 to connect, 36 touches, right? What are, you, what are, what are we thinking about those? Do we know what those are? Yes. Huh? I mean, you can flip it. Nope, keep going. Sorry. Nope, you're going the backwards. She's not going back. We should. There you go. Nope, that one. Sorry, I don't know why. It, I'm following this one and it says this was the next one. All right. So, in 19 to connect, four touches quarterly in your phone call. How can you remember to do that? I know. Most of my PCs are on it. DTD2. Yep. So what does DTD2 mean? Do the database twice, right? So every quarter you should be talking to every single person in your database. Does that sound overwhelming? No. How many times you have? Well, I have 2,000. Is it? How many people should you guys be talking to each week? Uh -huh. 100. 100. No, I'm sorry, 100 people a week, 20 people a day. How hard is it to talk to your database if that's the case? It's not. See if it, can't see it. <laughs> 12 touches monthly, an email, a newsletter, a marker report, or a video. Two touches, direct mail such as an agent calendar, printed marketing material, one touch a year of an event, a party, a moving screen, a get together. Yes? No. The intent of these touches is to be spread over an entire calendar year, which equates to about one touch every three weeks. The goal of this communication is to establish a formal relationship and open to a communication. Keep in mind, that this is just a list and not 
perspective of the order you should complete them in. For example, four, four phone calls will have the greatest impact if you spread them out once a quarter. When you think, when do you think a lead should be con should be added to your 19 to connect touch campaign? Immediately. Thinking, so you should be adding them to your 19 touch immediately. This is how quickly you reach out after every lead has engaged with you. The speed to lead should be rapid. Just think that if every lead entered your database through a social media post and consider how quickly that person has already moved on to engaging or interacting with other social media. How quickly do you sit and scroll? Anybody go on TikTok? Oh yeah. Anybody go on TikTok? I promise you that I could probably watch a hundred videos in 20 minutes. Because if I don't like the very beginning, what do I do? See you later. The next account that they need to interact, with, which could also be a real estate agent. So they could be on TikTok. And if you haven't noticed, you get on TikTok. And I'm using that one because I, I know that one. <laughs> but you get on TikTok. They, my kids call it the side. I'm on the real estate side of TikTok or I'm on the military side of TikTok, right? So if they're looking at interests and they're looking at real estate agents, so now I look at real estate stuff. I see Kathy all the time. I've seen you a couple of times. I've seen other people a couple of times in the office. So they're seeing all of us, right? So the one of us that has the most engaging for that particular person is the one they're going to interact with, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that what you put out you're not good enough or that they're going to be there. Because remember, there's tons of us and tons of people and lots of business. We've talked about this before, at least those in my PC program. The reason we can all be real estate agents is because there are so many different personalities and types in the world. As you get started in real estate career and as you begin to generate leads during your Ignite, Bold, anything else that you are doing, you should make Take into consideration that you should make regarding your own lead follow-up plan. Practice pages in, or in your guidebooks there are for some brainstorming. I want to brainstorm. Um, it, Eileen, can you switch to the next one? I'm sorry. Or if you, I, we're sharing her screen, so I can't flip it for her. Uh, let's talk about best practices for a touch to match your touch campaign. Consider your lead follow-up program. What are your strengths when working with people? How can I adapt the touches of a 19 to connect to represent me? What are some of the reasons I might have for contacting the lead? What are some touches to do before and after the phone call? How am I using conversations to let people know I am a real estate agent and how to contact me and how to refer business to me? When is it best for me and my business to time block for lead follow-up? How much time should it take to reach out to a lead? What will I do to hold myself accountable? And what do I need to make sure this happens? So what do you guys think about, about that? What can this do to help you create your plan? There is a lot of crickets going on around here. I know my guys on Zoom are Tip type in a way. So, what does knowing your strengths and weaknesses do for you? In the beginning of Ignite, you guys did your value propositions and you learned about how to figure out that, right? I know that my PCs that are on here, you guys all had to do your strengths and weaknesses. And I embarrassed you all and asked you, what is your strength? Yes? Yes. Yes. And then you use that to put it into your value proposition. So, what does that do? Go ahead, Danielle. So you know where to focus on your strengths and you know where you need leverage as far as your weaknesses. Exactly. So if you know that you're not good at, so I know I am not good at being creative. I can give you content up the yin yang, but if you put me on Canva, it will be the messiest thing you've ever seen in your life, right? Nothing will be even. I, I can give you a list of things I've been called out for. So that's my weakness, right? So I leveraged that out. I gave her everything I want on it. Say, here you go. 
But my strength is that I know what I'm talking about and I know that I can talk about it in with conviction. So I need to be in front of people. So my job is to get in front of as many people as possible. Right? But I need somebody else to help me make it eye catching. What about what are the reasons you, that you could be using for contacting leads? What are some of the things that you can do before or after a phone call? Talk to them on Facebook. See what's going on in their lives. Love it. Cassie? That's what I was gonna say. All right, fine. <laughs> Did you guys hear her? She said stalking on Facebook. Facebook can give you a lot of information. Instagram can give you a lot of information. You can find lots of stuff out about these people. All right, what about the next one? No, not, not, but go back to the other thing. <laughs> We're still brainstorming. What are some, how are you using your conversations to let a person know that you're in real estate? You ask them uh, how their job is going. Because then so when we go and talk about Ford and you're making a, for, a, a database call and we ask them about their occupation, how does that open up a conversation for you? Do you have to sound like a pushy salesperson that's only calling because you want real estate business? No, typically when you ask somebody about themselves, they ask about you in return. Exactly. So it becomes a natural conversation. And the more you do it, it becomes even more natural. When is the best time for me and my business to time block for follow lead follow-up? I know we all struggle in this area and I will be the first to tell you so do I. The follow-up, you have to time block it. Just like you have to time block your lead generation, you need to set away time to follow up with these leads because what's the point in generating all those leads and spending all that money, time and effort if you do not follow up cultivate and create business so that you can get an ROI. Yes? How much time should you take, should it take to reach out to a lead? Depends. Depends on what? If they're warm or cold. Okay. So cold lead, uh, we make nine attempts in the first three days to reach them. Okay. And then they go on a long-term trip campaign. Yes. Do you waste your time? No. No. Nine attempts in three days. And that's tech, three text messages, one text message a day, one phone call a day, one email a day. Um, if we don't have a one of those forms of contact, then we just double up on the call or double up on the email. Okay. Um, Can you set that up on a smart plan in command? Yeah, that's what it is. It's smart plan. It's the only thing we do is make the phone calls and we but get is notifications. That, but is we that? But is that in another smart plan to make a call that puts it into your tasks of what you need to do today? Yep. So how easy is it to make your own follow-up plan? What will I do to hold yourself? What will you do to hold yourself accountable? I assume all of you want to have fake businesses. Yes? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Zoom. Anybody on Zoom want a big business? Yes. Okay, so how do we hold ourselves accountable? You get an accountability partner. You can get an accountability partner. You could have a coach. I set my I set small rewards for myself. I love that. <laughs> I do that too. If I close a certain, certain amount of now. deals mm -hmm. in a certain quarter, I can go buy certain things. It's how I got my 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 cricket. And I spent a ridiculous amount of money on that I never should have done. Yeah, or I like plan a vacation. If I reach a certain vacation. volume goal, then I'll. Yes, yeah. Well, <laughs> and also for me, um, I share that with my family. So I'm like, well, listen, if mom can sell $8 million in real estate this year, we'll go to Disney next year, right? And so then they motivate me to reach that goal so that, because they want to go to Disney, right? Mm -hmm. So then they'll say to me, mom, you got to call that person back. You missed a call because they want to go to Disney. Okay. Love it. So. Love that. What do you do that you need to make sure this happens? I think Danielle answered that really well. Do any of you struggle with home and your real estate business? Yes. What do you, what are the struggles? Distraction after distraction after distraction. Distraction after distraction. What are your struggles, Cassie? 
My parents asked me to do things. Amen. Dude. Okay. What do you got, Eugenia? Baby, Lisa. My kids always need something. My son's calling me right now. Okay. Turned off my phone. <laughs> Therese, you got anything? Uh, some side hustle, side side work. Side work. Okay. So if we all have a distraction, does anybody take you seriously? As a as a real estate agent, because what I hear is everybody, it's a family. Somebody in the family or the kids are are distracting. I can personally tell you, my husband thinks that I don't do anything all day, I think, because but yet loves when I get paid. Because all day long he will ask me, Oh, can you stop here? Oh, can you stop here? Oh, can you grab this? Can you do this? You're yeah, I can person. at 5 p.m. when I am done working. Mm -hmm. Right? How many times have any of you called me and I'm like, okay, I'll call you back in 20 minutes. Sometimes it's not 20 minutes and you have to remind me again because somebody pushed over time, but you need to balance the life, right? You need to balance your life. How do you balance your life? Time block. But what Danielle said about bringing them into the fold is perfect. I don't believe in work-life balance anymore. For the There's longest time, I've struggled trying to find a work-life balance. And I realize now that it's a counterbalance. There are a lot of times where I'm putting more time and effort into my business. And there are a mm -hmm. lot of times when I'm putting more time and effort into my family. And it just depends on what those needs are, right? For not only my business, but also my family. Absolutely. And, um, by setting goals, like, you know, if, if my husband wants a new motorcycle, I'm just like, okay, well, I'll give you the down payment, but I need to sell X amount in real estate, right? And then he's motivating me because he wants that new motorcycle to make the phone calls, to be accountable, to show up when I need to show up because he knows that we both reap a reward from that, right? Exactly. So I'm meeting my goals. I'm increasing my income. I'm growing a larger business and he gets gifted some money for a down payment for a new motorcycle, you know, and then he's happy. I'm happy. Kids are happy, right? Exactly. So, so if you bring these people in on the goals, all right, your mom and dad might be a little bit difficult, but you could. The goal is for me to buy a house and get out of here. Yes, right? That's what the goal is. So if I buy, if you let me do, and 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 there is no work-life balance. I have never no, seen it. I've been doing this for 10 years. There's no way, no how are we going to have a work-life balance, right? And, but what you need to understand is you need to set the expectations of both home and work. My clients know if I don't answer, except for this one that has called me six times while we're here. <laughs> um, no, if I'm not answering you, there is a reason and I will get back to you within 24 hours. Plain and simple, they're not gonna die. Nothing in real estate is going to go up in flames. This isn't a, a phoenix that does burst. And even and if comes it does, back we're to not life. firemen, right? Like, exactly. Okay, exactly, right? There is nothing we can do. At six o'clock on a Friday night or seven o'clock on a Sunday night, I can't call an attorney and fix the deal. They're not there, so remember that. The only way to have work-life balance is when you're home, you're on point, and you are there. And in that moment, when you're working, you are working. You have to ignore, to be honest. All right, Eileen, you can flip over. All right, so now that you've had a chance to talk about this stuff and what you can do with it, what can you do? Nope, back, there you go. Nope, there you go. <laughs> All right. It so, went a little crazy by itself, okay. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. All right, so if we're gonna call people four times, well, let's talk about how much it's gonna cost us, right? So we need to plan. And I know that everybody has signed up for business planning next month, right? It is next month no, with Anna. Um, there will be, yeah, oh, this one, okay. yeah, no, right. In two weeks, there is a business planning class in our market center. Um, and I expect to see almost every one of you here. I do understand jobs. There will be a Zoom one opening, but all right, shameless plug. Calling and texting people, how much does that cost you? Zero dollars, because you're already paying for your cell phone bill, so that doesn't count, yes? All right, 12 emails, newsletters, marketing reports. I believe it was the Kia that, or Wendy that said personalized, handwritten things, birthday cards. How many of you get a birthday card in the mail? Only for my grandma. Get it from your grandma. Does it make you feel special when you get it in the mail? Because how many people get things like that anymore? No, you just get bills. Yeah, right? I, I don't want to go to the post office because all I know that's in there is bills. So somebody's birthday card, how much could that cost you? $5, $10 with shipping. It was like, it was like, like 100 for 10 bucks. 
birthdays. There you go. A hundred birthday cards for 10 bucks. Do they have to be snazzy? No. Do they have to be the ones that you buy for your kids that play music and that do all this crazy stuff? Because I truly like those because it annoys them when I push the button all day. Right? But postage just went up to 60 cents. Well, postage is 60 cents. Okay, so let's pretend it was ten dollars for a hundred. A hundred times sixty cents is what? Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I was just saying, really, you are not doing a little bit of math, guys. So we've got to work on that. All right, so we've got sixty cent or sixty dollars for the postage, and you got ten dollars for the birthday card. So for the year, you can spend seventy dollars to send out a hundred birthday cards. Yes? So that's not that expensive. Email, how much does that cost? Zero dollars. The object of this is that you need to think about it. The things that you're putting your money into to promote yourself, to follow up, to do all these things, to stay on top of mind needs to return on investment. When you are especially putting things straight to somebody that personal, like a birthday card, a birthday card for their kids, anything, it is 100% you're their realtor for life. How about informational videos, newsletters? How long does it take you to do that? Can you set up a template and just insert things on a regular basis each month? Do you guys pay attention to what's going on in your area every month to go do something fun? Yeah. Those of you who have kids, you're paying attention to see where you're going to take the kids, right? Mm -hmm. Put it in there. It's a one-stop shop, so you're awesome. They will literally go search their email for it instead of searching Google. Because if you have noticed, when you search Google, you got to go through 10 things of ads before you get into the actual thing you're looking for. <coughs> Promotional and direct mail. So local team sports, annual calendars, those are going to be a little bit more costly. So you're going to have to be ready for that. And an, an event, organized a could you do something like charity wise? Could you rally people together and everybody go clean up like what we do for Red Day? Does Red Day cost us a lot? No. Red Day costs us, I think, our shirts, right? But we do good in the community. And what does that do? You could be a Red Day every month, every week. I won't say every day because I'll get tired because you won't have time for anything else. But does that make sense? All right, Eileen, you can go without going crazy. <laughs> All right, so you've generated your lead. You're capturing your information. You can talk to them. You haven't heard back from them, and you don't know how much about the person. The communication is going to be a lot broader at that point. If you haven't gotten into that in-depth conversation. So let's say a Facebook lead comes in and you don't get them to answer the phone, but they haven't told you to stop or hung up on you, okay? It's still gonna be a little bit broader of, an, uh, of a conversation. This is where you're gonna communicate your value proposition. So that is why that is so important for you to know and be able to say it out of your brain without looking at it. You need to know what you bring to the table. Even if you use the, the company's uh, or personal statistics, it doesn't matter. That is part of your value. You know that people are more likely to respond when the message you are communicating feels personal and relative to them. As you engage with your leads, you can uncover how to serve them better and learn what they are interested in. As you learn this, you segment your communication more detailed and value-based information. Relevant conversations are more and more valuable and timely and lead to a greater opportunity for future conversations. Look beyond the who when you contact a lead. The most basic way to start doing this is to craft your message based on sor the source of the lead that it was generated from. For example, if the lead came through social media about first time home buyers, sending them an investment property newsletter may not be the most relevant. You need to pay attention. This is where tagging is very important. This is where putting notes into people is extremely important. And tracking what you are doing and where they're coming from. Every time you make a campaign on command, you can auto tag it what it is. If I click in my, in my command, all of the leads that came in on crotchety old man's house, 
And I say that, so I apologize to anybody who is not from my market center. Crash Yo Man is one of my clients. You literally can tell where they came from. I know what these people are looking at. They're looking at a huge farm. That is what, they, so if I have another farm property, who am I marketing to first? Those people. Command does it instantaneous. Oh, I moved to the wrong page, sorry. Once the door is open for that two week conversation, use the conversation to find their motivation. Once you get them to have a conversation with you, you need to dig deeper, engage with your engaging them, finding out what their timeline is, their business plans are, and other possible interests, and use that to group them into your command so that again, you can say, All right, so here I've got investment properties that are going out. I've got something going on that I just learned from one of our lunch and learns from a lender. Put that information into an email and you can blast that to just those people that it would interest because somebody looking for a single family home is not going to care about a multifamily situation. Um, go ahead, I mean, turn, tell participants to turn, I just read it to tell you, the value page in your participant guide. Once you know the source, you can narrow down the range of value. Knowing the source makes it easier. So now once you have sourced these people, you can say, why are you thinking about buying? Tell me more. And what does that, is that going to do for you and your family? Every time you have tag where they came from, an open house, you need to tag them. If you have a conversation with them at that open house, you should be able to say, okay, great. This is what they're looking for. They have an agent but they didn't come with their agent and they didn't put their information down. When my clients go to your open house, they write down my name and number. So you will call me, not that, right? That's because I have set my expectations with my clients beforehand. So what you wanna do is make sure, okay, so I met Courtney at an open house and Courtney doesn't have an agent and he's really looking for his family. He's not sure that he wants to buy it, but all that should be in his contacts when I've come back from that open house and put them in there. Now my next questions to Courtney when I follow up the day, same day or next day are, so tell me more about what you're thinking about buying. Was the house that you came to see today, the house that you were looking for? What about it? Was it, did it not do it for you? The more information you pull out, the more you can continue to have a valuable conversation with them. Oh, I did that already. All right, we're on the ahas. Anybody have any ahas right now for any of the things that we have just talked about? Any questions? Once you follow up with the lead, you have permission to have that two-week conversation, right? So what do you think happens with that person? Once you've obtained permission to have a two-way conversation, they become a <coughs> contact in your database. So they should automatically be moved from the 19 to connect to 36 touch. What is the purpose of a 19 to connect? was to connect with that lead, opening the door for the two-way conversation. Connecting with the lead doesn't necessarily mean that they are gonna do business with you or that your relationship is strong as it could be, but that is why you need to continue on another touch campaign. Whether it is a lead or a contact in your database, every person should be on a touch campaign. So not every person you're going to get in contact with and have a two-way conversation. Yes? yes? They should be in your database, what should they be marked as? Wait, repeat that, I'm sorry. Not every person in your database will be a contact because you will not have had a two-way conversation. What should they be marked as? A lead. A lead. Correct, you leave them at a lead, why? Because you didn't make contact. You didn't make contact with them yet and you are still on that contact. So with Danielle's plan of the nine steps, they just go on a long-term contact plan, right? They're, it's a long-term nurture. You haven't, you don't take them out of that lead status until they hit that two-way conversation. 
So this is how the funnel works. We capture all the leads, the leads come in here. We try to contact them in the 19 or the 36 to convert. It's can 36 touch, turn them into a contact. That means you're now it's time to start strengthening this relationship. I'm gonna fire them. Um, after you have strengthened that relationship, you're gonna contact into a conversion. Conversion, converting those leads means they are now a client, right? When you have converted these people into seeding, they are ready to buy or sell. That's when they become a client. They could be a contact for those seven years that we have in the wave, right? They may never not be it for 10 years, but they are a contact that you should be following up with on a regular basis. Go for it. So when you have a lead, how do you how do you mark if it's a lead or a contact? Is there is it a tag? Are there tags? is a button in command that you can mark it as a lead. It's a checkbox. All right, and then you just uncheck it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once you have conversations and you go in to update your contact card for that person, you're going to go and uncheck it, and you should be able to tag them with what their interests are. Right. So right now I have leads that came in on that that particular property. And they are all marked as leads because I have not spoken to them yet, but they are on a, a touch with the properties that way. I can, they also are tagged with the house that they came in on. So any farms I get or I happen to see, and I just want to drum them up possibly to have that two-way conversation can be blasted out to them. All right. So I think it's two more, I mean, if we can, I think we can skip the aha one. It might not be. There we go. No, the cement one. Sorry. Go back to cement. There we go. All right. One to cement. At the point where a lead opens the door for the two-way conversation, you must cement that relationship. Everyone in your database should be cemented right when you transition them to the 36 to convert. What do you think the purpose of the one to submit cement touch campaign is? I mean, I really just told you what the purpose is, but that's besides the point. All right, a high value touch that solidifies the relationship you just have established and opens the door for future interactions. How could give me some ideas on how you could have that one touch? Cassie, how can you give that one touch? What could be a high value touch? Send a card. Send a card. Could be, but if you have it, it's a lead, and you're just getting that two-way conversation. What is it that you need to do to convert them? You've got to be able to give them the value and the reason why they want to continue to talk to you. That touch could be, like I just said, the fact that those leads all are looking for a farm, and I am only sending them farms. I'm not sending them every house under the sun. Right? I know I've had a few people tell me they feel like they bother people. There's a very big difference between sending emails of value and sending emails just to send emails. Making phone calls just to have make phone calls. Right? There's always a purpose behind them. It's just a matter of how you deliver them. We don't want to go in like the car warranty people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Although they are starting their conversations out better. You know, I have to say. <laughs> Yesterday one threw me for a loop. I was like, ooh, that was good. They chuckled. And I was like, but not good enough. Click. Um, <laughs> what if you offer to Keller a book? Your first home as a gift to a first time home buyer lead. Even if it costs a bit, will it make such an impression that the lead chooses to continue? The relationship. I was going to say just now. I heard that it's now available in Spanish as well. Ooh, for your Spanish-speaking clients, yeah, you can pre-order it. It's not out yet, but it's coming. So, what if you offered something like that? First-time homebuyer book, Keller Inc. is one of them. Something like that in your thirty-six nineteen touch. Hey, just to get you ready to purchase your first home. I'd love to give you this for free. Give me a call if you're interested. That opens the door 
You have to solidify it and you have to follow through. Yes? All right, I mean, let's push to the next one. I feel like I'm missing stuff. Each day in Ignite, you grow in how you think, at least I hope you all are. Feel, act, and implement what you've learned. Learning in aha is to help you move forward. So I am not going to let you all off until somebody types something, each one of you, and or says one thing. Kevin's the only one that gets an excuse because he wasn't here the whole time. Is there anything that you guys can think of that would, has changed your mind or mindset ideas for follow-up. It's gonna get deeper over the next three <clears throat> sessions. <clears throat> I think I switched my phone, so I can't remember. I realize it's really important to use commands. Really, really, and set up smart plans. I have to do more of that. So let me, so it's really important for Lisa to use smart plans and follow and command. What do you think that's going to do for your business? It's going to help me be organized and actually do the work that I should be doing, the right work, I think. Say what? Say it's it again. It's going to help me keep me organized and like help you keep it organized. Focus. What I should be doing and not wasting time on things that I shouldn't be doing. Okay. Love it. I plug my class. I will be doing live classes in person in each market center in the next upcoming two weeks. So Perfect. look out for that. Eugenia, what have you changed your thoughts? Give me an aha. Uh -huh. All right. Wendy says something of value that per value that personal towards them and their needs. Great. Zakia says a little, the little things like birthday card and follow-up methods. The follow-up is very important. Don't wait for people to reach out to you. Erica, that is 110%. I cannot tell you how many times a day I hear from some of the PCs. Oh, well, I gave them their off my card. What good does that do? What do you think I do with the business cards I get? I mean, I technically keep them because I want them for something else, right? Because I'm going to follow up with them for them to do business with me, not for me to do business with them necessarily, but right? They're tossed. They're tossed. If you do not capture the contact and give them value and a reason why they should give you their information, how do you follow up with them? Your follow up game is the most important. Over the next three sessions, you're going to work on follow up procedures and ways to do it, how to build your relationships a little bit better. Is anybody working on their daily success trackers? Yes. Danielle does. You two always do. Hey, cheat. <laughs> Christina, how long have you been licensed? Our business. Uh, right. That's what I was just going to say. How long have you been licensed? Three years. How long have you been? Uh, almost four. Almost four. But this is my first year as a full time agent. Yes. I supported our team as the director of operations for three years. Right. So Danielle's only been a year. Yes. She's been around it. She breathes it. She eats it. That's different. But she was doing something completely different than what she's doing now. What she follows the systems. And what are you at right now? Uh, a little over 8 million. And um, I should close 12 million this year. I increased my business by almost 400%. Would you say that was from just lead generating? Uh, no. Yes. I mean, I lead generate every day. I have a system for everything I do. I lead generate in the morning, I do my follow up in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're a team, so we have leverage, um, you know, we have cyber backers that support us with um, listing, entering listings, paperwork, that kind of stuff. And so do they. anybody who's here has an option to use they all the have it. service. 
every single one of you is on the enhanced plan. I don't know about everybody on here, but 100% worth it. Like if I were in your position, I didn't have a team, I would absolutely 100% use the care service because it really gives you the opportunity when you look at it, you're like, wow, I'm spending this money, right? But it gives you the opportunity that you can focus on your one thing, your 20%, leave the 80% to them. And then that's how you really are going to be able to scale up your business. And Christina, if you want to kind of, Christina's business is up 350%. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's- And Christina has a toddler, a two-year-old. And a good staff today. Mm -hmm. She's definitely a leader. Right? She's a two-year-old toddler, and Christina's a single mom. There's no excuse. You have to put it on your calendar and follow up. Follow up with the leads because you can generate hundreds and hundreds of them every day. It's going to do you no good if you do not follow up with them. Does anybody have any questions? Is there more slides, Eileen? I because it doesn't show me any. Just talking about that systems. Yeah, that's what we. That's it, I think. Oh. <clears throat> and then role play. That's it. All right. So the next session is another follow up with leads. Um, is the next session is following up with leads. Anybody has any questions? I mean, you can put my information in the chat for them real quick. Sure. Or you to do it. I can actually do it. You got it, or you want me to? I forgot. Um, I, you, if you probably quicker if you did it, because I have to look it up. So. <laughs> And if anybody wants any videos or trainings about command to get all this done, you know, email me as well. I'll put my information in. I am your market center tech trainer. And I either have classes every month or I can do a one on one if you're confused or I have tons of videos I can send you. Or if you just want to chat and figure out what you need to do for your business, you can let me know. Thanks everybody for listening. I need to get all in there. Aileen's in there. Uh, don't forget to tune in next Monday at 11 o'clock for the next se session of Ignite. Thank you. Talk Thanks, Aileen. Thanks, Aileen. Bye,